Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'll be using Reality Scan, the new 3D scanning app developed in collaboration with Quixel by Epic and Capturing Reality. It's in beta at the moment and there's 10,000 places for you to try this out. So if you scroll down to the bottom of this link and install Test Flight, you'll be able to try it on your device. At the moment it's just on iOS, so I put it on an Apple iPhone 12 and decided to compare it against the desktop application Reality Capture and see what it's all about. Once I have Test Flight installed on my application, I can open. It launches fast, it's smooth and didn't crash for me at all. I then move around the object, trying to get it in as much of the frame as possible with every image, and I took approximately 30 photographs around it. Now one thing that's missing is any camera controls here. So I was just snapping away and assuming everything was in focus with the preview on the display. It does show you the position of the last photograph, so you can very easily use this to align yourself with the last photograph or the position, which is an excellent feature in my opinion. The one thing that didn't work for me was the turntable option that I usually use, keeping the phone stationary and rotating the object on the turntable. After you've taken several images and they're being uploaded whilst you take them, a voxel is generated. The images process fast and I was using 5G intentionally and not Wi-Fi data here. Once you have enough images uploaded for an alignment, it will give you the option to be able to adjust the bounding box and scale it to focus in on a specific area. Again, with this, you can move the phone and you can very easily manipulate this to get the bounding box where you want it to be. I took approximately 30 photographs around the object and once this was complete, I was able to see the reference photographs and move on to taking approximately 20 photos of the top of the object. I can also remove this voxel preview from the middle of the screen by clicking the button to the left of it. Once I'm satisfied with my images, I can now process these and it will generate, after just a couple of moments, a preview for me to be able to view before I export it to Sketchfab. The entire process was incredibly rapid and, as I say, it didn't crash for me. It also has a crop option that I didn't use in this instance. Once the preview mesh is generated, I can hit the export to Sketchfab option and I will get an email to my Sketchfab email address telling me when the model is ready to view. I finished processing at 7 minutes past 3 and my model was ready to view at 12 minutes past 2. So I assume with the time difference that was 5 minutes. Once in Sketchfab I can navigate this either on my mobile device or my laptop and change this to matcap view or wireframe view for further inspection of the geometry. I found that when you upload it or make it public, you're then able to download the 3D model for preview inside Blender in this case. Texture is automatically generated at 4096 by 4096. The geometry itself is five megabits in size in this case. Once inside Blender, I import the GLB file and I can inspect the geometry. Here I'm just setting the pivot and I am going to move it to the center of my axes. Then I'll apply the transforms and I can inspect this model further. I usually turn on this red matcap material which reminds me a little bit of ZBrush. Here it is with the texture preview. I'm now going to process the same images inside Reality Capture. Now I took 51 photographs and I tried to take them as exactly the same lighting conditions in exactly the same way as I took the original photographs. Again, these are very fast to align, taking approximately 12 minutes for the alignment, the mesh generation and the texture generation. I have the added bonus of being able to export a normal map from Reality Capture as well. Immediately I can see a better quality mesh and when I go to the export stage it charges me $39 to export this material. I do a quick simplify to 300,000 tries which is about the same size as the model that was generated by Reality Scan. Then I export for importing back into Blender. Here I go into X-ray mode and trim out the excess geometry on both models.
Now there's about 30,000 faces difference here, but clearly the model generated with the desktop version on the left-hand side is of far higher quality, in my opinion. What I'll do next is resize the texture to 4096 for the desktop application and compare them both inside Unreal Engine. Now I'm using the newly released 5.0.0. Here I'm using the new third-person template which has a new look mannequin and an atmospheric sky by default. I'm just going to import the geometry and textures, put them in the scene and scale them up. For the reality capture, I will add a flattened normal for the normal map. The next thing is just to add some text so we can preview this. In first inspection, the reality capture mesh certainly proves to be better looking, with more detail in all areas. Now I have not retopologized these meshes as I usually do, I've put them straight in. And as I say, there is a normal map in the reality capture mesh. but I can definitely see better detail in that geometry. Because the new third person template is using real time lighting, I can choose the directional light and rotate it by pressing Ctrl L. Well, that's the end of a quick comparison of Reality Scan and Reality Capture. You can go onto my Sketchfab and download the models for free to inspect yourself. From my findings, smaller objects didn't work particularly well and I couldn't use a turntable. Reality Scan definitely has its place for on-the-move quick scans and for those who don't have access to the hardware or the software Reality Capture to be able to process it on a desktop. Personally, I prefer the desktop workflow as it gives me more control over the size of the geometry and also gives me further options to be able to trim it out or export normal maps or higher resolution textures. However, Reality Scan worked incredibly well for me and I was surprised at how fast it processed and how quickly it uploaded it to Sketchfab ready for download. In the past, I have used my mobile phone to send my data set to my remote workstation for processing on site. However, this workflow can be a little bit time consuming and relies on a remote desktop subscription in my case to get it running and can use excessive amounts of data. For me, the reality scan workflow definitely has a place in the future. And once they implement Android camera photos or drone data sets, it could be an incredibly useful tool for quick 3D scans. The only other thing I would say is if you wanted to avoid Sketchfab entirely, the desktop workflow may be preferable. The best thing about all this is it remains completely free and fits in very nicely into the entire Epic Games ecosystem. Once again, thanks very much for watching. If I did anything wrong, if you can make any suggestions or if you have any questions or comments, please ask me and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.